I grew up in a country that ceased to exist, uh, East Germany. When I was nine years old, the wall came down and we didn't really know what it was like on the other side. So my mom and I decided one Sunday morning that we'd bike across the border, which was about 20 kilometers away. It's a long bike ride for a nine-year-old, but we just wanted to see what it was like. And we did. And you know what? It was one of the most colorful and shiny experiences in my life. Only then I realized that I had been living in a world that was black and white, in a visual sense, but also, of course, in an ideological sense. So that experience really changed my perspective of the world. And 25 years later, I'm a research scientist at MIT, and I work on technology that helps people change their perspectives on the digital world. I work on display technology, and with some of my students, like Matt Hirsch here, we disassemble existing devices, like monitors, televisions, and we repurpose the parts, the electronics, the optics, into completely new kind of devices, things you've never seen before, with the goal to create new user experiences. And usually you have a sticker on these consumer electronics that says, don't open this. Well, I encourage you to do. Please try this at home. <laughs> we have a blog where we actually share the instructions how to disassemble these components and reassemble them in new ways. We also share apps and software. So please try this at home. A lot of people have tried this already. And the question is, how do we build meaningful new devices out of standard components? Well, I'll show you two examples where we got some inspiration from nature that helped us come up with ideas. So here's a photo of the blue morpho butterfly. It's got these microscopic multi-layer structures in its wings that create an effect that's known as iridescence. So it, it looks like it's got a different color depending on which direction you're looking at it from. So from your right eye, the butterfly may appear to be blue, and from your other eye, it may appear to be green. Okay, so this is a view-dependent effect that we can use to build better 3D displays. This is a photograph of a hummingbird. And what's special about this photo is that the hummingbird flaps its wings so fast that you can't actually see it. The camera's too slow. And the same thing happens in our visual system too. If things move really fast, we can't see them. We only see a motion blurred version of it. You can try that yourself. If you move your hand very fast in front of your face, you won't be able to see it while it's in motion. Right? You just see a blurred version. And now we can build devices that use exactly these and other effects too. So this device is called the tensor display because it uses uh, advanced tensor algebra, which I won't bore you with today, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the device itself has this multi-layer structure, just like the butterfly. It has multiple layers of liquid crystal panels. Those are the standard components that are in all of your laptop's uh, screens, and we just rip them out and assemble them into this multi-layer structure. And then each of the pixels can actually switch at a speed that is much faster than we can perceive with our eyes. What that allows us to do is we can create the illusion of three-dimensional objects floating in mid-air in front of and behind the physical device. But the magic is only really revealed when we use a high-speed camera to show what the pixels actually show. It's these strange-looking pattern that wobble over time and that are you know, sliced up on these individual layers of LCDs. And when they're optically overlaid and perceived by a human, they all fuse together perceptually into one consistent and high-resolution view of this 3D scene. So this could really be the television of the near future, where you can either watch a 2D movie or you can watch a 3D movie, and no glasses are required. Each person gets to see a different perspective of the virtual world, so that the television basically acts as a window into a virtual world. And you always get to see two different images with your eyes as well, and that creates this three-dimensional effect. And people have been talking about 3D displays for a while, but we still don't have high-quality devices. And this is completely different from anything you've seen before. But the idea of removing the need for glasses is much more powerful than building 3D displays. Most of the time I wear glasses not to see 3D better, but to see 2D better. <laughs> so my eyes have visual aberrations, and the glasses basically correct for that. But how many times have I forgotten to put on the glasses, and somebody calls me, and I just don't know who it is because I can't read my screen. Well, guess what? 
we have a solution for that as well. It's built on the same technology as glasses-free 3D displays. We call it glasses-free 2D displays. It's a display that can correct for your visual aberrations. So you can basically take your glasses and put them on the screen. And we can correct for myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, and also higher order aberrations. Things that are actually difficult to be corrected for with glasses. And the best thing about this is that it can be built using a hardware add-on to your phone. So you, it's a piece of clear plastic with a special printed transparency that you can clip on your existing phone or tablet and you can turn that into a vision correcting display without actually having to disassemble it. So we can make that for less than a dollar. And what it looks like is like this. You know, when you remove this attachment, the font, you can't actually read it because it's blurred. You can't even see the buttons. You don't know which app you're starting. But by showing a special kind of pattern and observing it through this attachment, it creates this illusion in your perception that there is a focused 2D image on that screen. And this is really only possible today because we have phones and tablets that have such a high resolution. We have phones that have 300 pixels per inch, which is as much as the retina can actually resolve at this certain distance. And we can use that resolution to either show, well, very high resolution 2D images or to correct for our visual aberrations. So here you can see a comparison, what you'd normally see on a conventional display and what you'd see on this vision correcting display. Normally everything is blurred and out of focus and we can correct for that and bring the bunny back in focus. <laughs> but I'm not the only person with refractive errors. In fact, out of 7 billion people worldwide, there's about 2 billion people who have refractive errors. And most of us wear glasses or contacts or we get surgery to live with that. But there's about 600 million people worldwide that don't have the same access to healthcare infrastructure that we have here, mostly in developing countries. And their visual aberrations go uncorrected. If you can't see the world properly, that leads to illiteracy and in some cases also unemployment. So interestingly, today there are about 6 billion cell phone subscriptions worldwide. And by the end of this year, this number is supposed to surpass the number of people in the world. So wouldn't it be amazing if we could use all these cell phones to help people to see better? Because then we could make an impact on their lives and on ours as well. So I work on technology that helps shaping people's perspective of the world. Thanks a lot.